at this point one wonders who are the real owners of the jubilee party is it william ruto and gadi gashagwa is it uhuru kenyatta is it jeremiah kioni or kanini kega barely a few hours after the jubilee caucus took place in nakuru and in that parliamentary group meeting they deliberated and reached on a decision to suspend the vice chair of jubilee party david murade the secretary general jeremiah kioni and the treasurer jeremiah kioni laughed off those resolutions while in mavoko in an azimio rally and he said that he still remains the secretary general of the jubilee party and that uhuru kenyatta will still remain in a zimio who is fooling who who is suspending who and who are the real officials of the party jeremiah kioni is sharing letters shokos letters to sabina chege adan kainan to to kanini kega and some of those members who went to state house without the authority of the party but at this stage it is crystal clear that this is a case of a husband and a wife trying to be forced to live together it is the same case with jalango and the odm party william ruto once said and he has continued to reiterate that he wants a strong opposition that will check the government but at the same time he is trying to cut off the branches of this very opposition that is talking about he started by uh, taking away the udm parties immediately after the elections and he has continued with this onslaught to an extent that jubilee looks to me like it's no more but he has really rattled uhuru kenyatta ushaona mtu amekufikia hapa i think william ruto amemfikia uhuru kenyatta he is, is really vexed uhuru to an extent that uhuru can't explain i think he has pushed him to the wall because what he's doing is it's non discreet you can't explain what is doing to uru kenyatta so it seems uru kenyatta has, has decided he's been rattled to an extent that is decided to kick out the rebel jubilee members because he has instructed the secretary general to give them shokos letters in this sense i don't know whether the process will materialize to what they want because there is an internal mechanism that will look into the conduct of these members but they are the majority and i think even if this internal mechanism the disciplinary internal mechanism will start they will not be found culpable and i'm sure that they will state it very clear that they want to work with the ruling party and they don't want to be in the zimio i just don't know how will uhuru kenyatta is going to handle this situation but one thing i can assure you is that rigathi gashagwa and william ruto are trying to take over jubilee party the same way they tried taking over kanu party in fact today the national governing council of uh, the kanu party expelled from the party mr nick salat who was a very close ally a close friend of uh, gideon moy and the longest serving secretary general of the kanu party so william ruto is on an onslaught to wreck all the parties and this is why he's trying to wreck even the odm luckily enough for railo dinga the people are still with him leaders can go but the majority of electorates are still are still with railo dinga william and rigathi gashagwa are really scared of the azimio regrouping to start their campaigns and they understand that they must cut off the branches so that that perception of rail odinga standing alone can go wild 
But if you look at the rallies, the way Wananchi love those rallies, it seems William Ruto is still in trouble because he might take a few leaders, but Wananchi are ready. The language that is spoken in those rallies are only meant to charge the Wananchi because it is the language of the school fees, skyrocketing prices of uh, the basic commodities, the high cost of living, and they are reminding Kenyans that Raila had indicated that when or if he ascended to power, he was going to give free education from the lowest to the highest level, to the university. When the common man feels the pangs of hunger, they will go to the streets and they will not be forced. William Ruto fears that this can turn out to be a revolution. And it can be an Unga revolution. It doesn't matter what Kalonzo, Raila, or Martha thinks. People can decide to go to the streets by themselves. And this is why he's trying as much as he can to ensure that he contains the Azimio party. One thing that still remains a challenge to William Ruto is one. For how long is he going to give excuses to the Hustler nation? Because he can even succeed in containing the Azimio. But after containing the Azimio, let's say he wrecks Kanu to the ground. He wrecks the Jubilee to the ground. Then what will happen next? Because President William Ruto imagines that the common man is being incited by the leadership of the opposition. But far from it, the common man feels the pain of the high cost of living. Because William Ruto removed all the subsidies and now they are left at the masses of God. The cost of electricity has gone up. The cost of education, the cost of music. So things are bad, not because they are leaders who are inciting, but every Kenyan can feel, can see the pain that they are going through. This soap opera of trying to wreck parties will not work because the real issues lie on the cost of living. William Ruto should try to fix the economy and politics will fix itself. Like Kibaki did. Kibaki fixed the economy and politics fixed itself. If today the cost of living was affordable, no one would even bother going to the streets, I can assure you. No one would follow Raila to the rallies. But William Ruto has given this opposition to go on a campaign spree to remind the people of the pledges that they gave to Kenyans. So William Ruto should make a U-turn and stop bothering the parties and taking the leaders. Because if he calls a few leaders in state house and gives them some money, the Mwana Inchi who feels the pain will still go to the rallies.